Hey everybody, welcome back to the SOLIDWORKS Electrical Implementation video series. This video is all about libraries and all the different libraries that you have available to you within the software. So as you can see at the top here, I don't even have to have a project open and I have access to all the different libraries that we have within the system. And reading them from left to right, we have our symbols manager, which is all going to be all of our schematic symbols or our line diagram symbols. We also have 2D footprints, which will be used on a cabinet layout drawing. Title blocks, our macros, which we'll get into later. Cable references, so all the different types of cable out there or custom cables that you may be using. All of your manufacturer parts, and as well as your wire terminations, your library manager classifications, terminal types and even ERP database connection. Now, within your library tab, the two most common used tabs are our icons are going to be your symbol manager and your manufacturer parts. And if I open up either one of those, we can see on the left hand side, we have our classifications. These classifications, other than the two that I have in red here, are all hard coded into the software. They cannot be changed. I can change certain properties about those, but I cannot change or delete them completely, which is probably a good thing. And then additionally, in this case here, I've also created, you could see here, distribution blocks or just notes that I want to uh, account for within the project. The symbols manager and the manufacturer part library uh, manager also have, they have the same classifications. And the nice thing about this is that let's say I go in and I drop in a connector symbol into my schematic and I want to assign a manufacturer part. Well, it, the system will automatically know that that was a connector symbol that I put in. So it will automatically filter to just connectors. So I don't have to get all 5, 10, 15, however many thousand parts I have in my library will only filter to just those connectors and make it a little easier to find the part that I'm looking for. Now, again, I did mention that I can create custom classifications. So I do have that, that uh, classifications manager where I can go through and look at the different types of classifications. Again, create a new one. Maybe there's a specific category that I want to create. I can add additional pieces of information, metadata pieces of information about these, these parts. Um, again, there's different properties that I can associate to these classifications. I can also go ahead and change the root, which will be used on every symbol to identify it in the components tree for this. So instead of maybe for connectors, maybe I don't want to have it be X, maybe I want it to be CN for connectors, or maybe I want to even create a subcategory for, for jacks or for plugs. I do have the ability to, to change those there as well. So again, you do have, you have different libraries for your title blocks, your macros. We'll, again, we'll get into a few of those as well. But one thing I also want to point out about our libraries is the ability to organize those libraries, maybe for specific customers or maybe for maybe for specific use cases. Maybe there are certain projects that I want to work on. So this brewery data set here that I have, maybe there are certain parts that are only going to be used with the brewery project. And so if that's the case, I can select those parts and specifically put them in this library. And that way, if I don't have that library turned on, I can't see it. It can hide, you can hide parts or only show that library. I've seen a couple instances where interns are coming on board to help alleviate and work with some design teams during the summer months. And they don't want the interns to have access to everything. So they can create a specific library just for them to to build things out. Now one other thing to note about your libraries is each library you do have the ability to import or export information in and out of your classification into your libraries. Now in SOLIDWORKS Electrical we call it archiving and unarchiving when you want to take information in or out of the software. 
Now, if I'm going to export this one particular symbol here, when I do that, if we notice in the bottom here, the extension for this symbol is going to be .symb. It's good to know this because if I try to import this symbol into another system, it's not going to let me put it into the manufacturer parts library or the cable references manager because the manufacturer parts library has a different extension on the end of it. It's .part.tewzip. So each library, again, has its own extension at the end of it. And it's good to know that because uh, even I, myself, I got tripped up on it trying to import things when I first started with the software and I couldn't figure out why the heck certain part, certain pieces of information weren't allowing me to import it. Um, and so it's just good to know that now I have the ability, if I know that that SIM or title block uh, macros, you just have to go to the right window, the right, um, open the right window and it'll allow you to uh, unarchive those back into the system. So with that said, that is a general overview of our libraries. We will get into a little bit deeper with our, especially our symbols and our manufacturer parts here in the next couple videos. So again, I hope this helps and stay tuned for the next one. Thanks for watching.